Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Yap. I'm a senior anesthesiologist from the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, University of Malaysia, Sabah. And this is my assistant. Good morning, I'm Sapna Stana. And today we are going to demonstrate about the methods of intubation on a patient in the operating theater setting. Before we proceed further, we would like to demonstrate to you what are the ways that we need to do before the patient is being given general anesthesia in the operating theater. Good morning, sir. May I know what is your name? Uh, how old are you? What is your ID number? When your last meal? Do you know any? Do you have any medical illness and allergy? Have you removed your jewelries and any important items? Do you know which procedure you are going undergoing today? Do you know what types of anesthesia you will be given? After the staff nurse in the operating theatre has obtained the patient's consent and the right uh, procedure that is going to do, the next step is that we must make sure the patient has a functioning IV line and a good monitoring. So we need a good assistant to make sure that the uh, IV line is functioning. So Sabrina, can you please hook up this patient to an IV line? Alright. Can you please hook up an IV line, please? Alright. Okay. Thank you very much. And then we need to put the patient on into the DCG lips and the BP together with the saturation probe. Can you please hook it up? Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Alright, sir. Don't worry, all are okay. Just keep coming, yeah, Mr. Ronald. One of the most important aspects in ensuring patient safety is the preparation of IV medications such as resuscitation drugs. One of the most important drugs are IV atropine, IV ephedrine. These two drugs are important to increase the patient's blood pressure and also the heart rate increase in case that the patients develop bradycardia or hypotension intraoperatively or during anesthesia. On top of that, we need to prepare our intravenous anesthetic agents that we use to use are IV propofol, IV fentanyl, and also IV loporonin. That is the muscle relaxants that we always use. We can also use IV saxamethonium in case that the patient has not be well faster. The drugs must be well prepared and placed so that it is clear and easily be seen. The name of the drug, the dosages must be clear as well. So this is one of the important aspects in ensuring patient safety at all times. Another important part of ensuring patient safety is to check our preparation of equipment. Make sure that our endotracheal tube and also the laryngoscopes are functioning well. So this is a laryngoscope whereby it is well maintained by a battery. So make sure it is placed into the laryngoscope first. And this is the blade. Alright, so we must select the appropriate size of blade that we are going to use on a patient and make sure the lights are on and functioning. Next, we must also prepare our oral pharyngeal airway, OPA, which is also appropriate size for the patient's mouth. In addition, and the most important item is the endotracheal tube. This is a size 7.5 endotracheal tube that we usually use on an adult. So how we want to check that is functioning is that we must inflate some air through the pilot balloon and you see the distal cuff is inflated. If it is inflated, means it is functioning. 
If it's not inflated, there's a risk of aspiration to the patient and the cuff is not tight enough. In addition, this is the angle back. So the right size of the mask is important to be selected before we angle back onto the patient. All right. After ensuring that the preparations are adequate for the patient and also the drugs have been prepared, after that we have to prepare ourselves. Make sure that we wear our protective equipment such as our gloves and also the uh, mask. So there is no spillover of saliva or blood when we are intubating the patient. Before we intubate the patient, make sure that the patient's position is at the most suitable level with us and it's ergonomic for the intubator. Means that it's good for us so that we do not have to bend too low to intubate the patient. All right. Ideally, the length or the height of the patient would be at our umbilical level. So it's at our most ergonomic point. After that, we have to tell the patient that we are going to start intubation for this patient. After that, this patient should be pre-oxygenated with 100% oxygen. Make sure the, the mask is of appropriate size to cover the reach of the nose and the mouth. On top of that, there is an oxygen supply being connected to the ambu bag. Alright, this is the way of us holding the mask in the CE method. So the C and E method. C is that we push the mask to fit into the mouth and the nose. Or the E is to pull up the mandible to against to our body. Once the IV anesthetic agent such as fentanyl, propofol and the rocuronium has been delivered to the patient, make sure that we pre-oxidate the patient by angle bagging the patient. We must ensure that the vapor rise can be seen and there is an equal air entrance being visualized on the lungs. It means that the lung is able to be ventilated and the airway is catered. Our left hand must be the one holding the laryngoscope at all times. No matter whether you are left-handed or a right-handed, we must always hold the laryngoscope with your left hand. We must grab the or the shaft of the laryngoscope with a thumbs up position. Alright, so this is the right way of you handling the laryngoscope. The right hand will be the one you holding the endotracheal tube at all times before you intubate the patient. After the patient is well pre-oxygenated, the patient is being ready to be intubated. Before that, we must ensure that the patient's vital signs are stable. ECG must be of normal rhythm and normal heart rate. Blood pressure with its normal values of its age. And the saturation should be around 98-100% to concentration. Once these values have been achieved, you hold the laryngoscope with your left hand and you swipe through the tongue from the right side on into the left side of the tongue lifting up the epiglottis in view. With the lifting of the epiglottis, you will see the vocal cord. After you have seen the vocal cord, instruct your assistant to pass to you the endotracheal tube. Thank you. And you glide it through into the vocal cord and remove the laryngoscope. After that, you remove your stylet. The stylet is important for you to guide the endotracheal tube into the larynx. After the endotracheal tube has been inserted, you have to inflate the balloon so as to inflate the cuff on the distal part. Usually, you need around 8 to 10 mL of air to be inflated. Next, you have to test whether the endotracheal tube is inside, to, inside the trachea. Back the patient, and you see that there is a vapor in the endotracheal tube. There is a chest rise visualized. 
After that, you need to uh, escalate the patient's lung. Okay, Nana, can you help me back the patient, please? You have to escalate the patient's lung on the one right upper zone, two left upper zone, three left lower zone, and the right lower zone together with the epigastrium so as to confirm the placement of the ETP in the thoracic cavity. Thank you very much. So, after it has been confirmed and equal air entry auscultated, you have to instruct your assistant to make sure that the EDD has been uh, anchored at the appropriate line of around 21cm for an adult man. After the patient is safely intubated and anchored, this patient will then be hooked up into the ventilator for the ventilator support and the anesthesia can be maintained either from the inhalational agent such as servofluorin or desfluorin or total intravenous anesthesia, TIVA, using remifentanil or propofol. The surgeon can still proceed. Please proceed, surgeon. I'm going to show you the view of the larynx using the video scope. This is the happy about this. It looks like a leaf and it should be lifted up whenever you want to intubate the patient. After the lifting up of the epiglottis, you should see a vocal cord. Once you have seen the vocal cord, you have to instruct your assistant to pass you the endotracheal tube and you have to pass it directly under visualization and the balloon has passed over the vocal cord. And you have seen that there are two lines in the EDT. Alright? There are two lines that in the EDT. This is the black line. It should be in the middle of the vocal cord. These two lines should be in the middle of the vocal cord. After that, remove your endoscope and pilot. Confirm the placement after the balloon has been inflated. And you try to confirm placement with the angle pack and auscultating the lung. I hope you all of you enjoyed the video that we have already presented. Thank you very much and happy viewing.